Chair. I call Jonathan Young. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, uh, Sir, before I make my contribution, I also would like to just acknowledge the, uh, the work and the support of the officials, uh, not only to the Minister but to the Select Committee as we went through the process of uh, analysing this bill and hearing from submitters uh, from right across uh, New Zealand, uh, employers and employees. Uh, sir, I was uh, away when the second reading uh, was uh, heard last uh, Thursday, so this is my first opportunity to speak after the Select Committee process. And, uh, Sir, I just want to acknowledge uh, the members of the committee, both on this side of the House and on the other side, as well as we have worked, uh, Sir, to uh, come to a place where uh, we want to, in particular, protect uh, some of the uh, more vulnerable employees in our country. I want to just speak briefly on the definition that has been uh, articulated here this evening, um, and I think uh, the member opposite Ian Lees Galloway made the uh, quote or made the comment that a zero-hour contract was a permanent part-time uh, contract with no fixed hours. So I'd like to add to that as well, because I believe that it is a, a zero-hour contract is more than that. It's a permanent part-time contract with no fixed hours and the requirement to be available to the exclusion of other employment opportunities. And so we need to understand and recognise that right across this House, every single one of us oppose that definition of what it is. And as we went through the committee process, sir, the very principle of this bill that it sought to uh, <clears throat> strengthen was the mutuality of obligation. And, sir, so if there are, if there are uh, contracts with no fixed hours that are permanent part-time, but with the, with the requirement that the employee be available to the exclusion of other employment opportunities, that is not a mutual obligation committed by the employer to that person. And so, as a committee, we looked at these uh, measures and we came back, and as the Minister has alluded, uh, we strengthened the uh, obligations of the employer. And some of these have been spoken about, sir, this evening. They've been as such that the employer must have genuine reason, based on reasonable grounds, for including the availability provision in a contract. In fact, if they don't even put the availability contract in an employment contract agreement, they can't ask a worker to do such. And the availability provision provides for the payment of reasonable compensation to the employee for making himself or herself available to perform work under the provision. It's good that we're going to come to an agreement through all of this with the different SOPs that are coming through. And, sir, um, I believe that, as the Minister has said and other speakers have said, that if there are agreed hours and guaranteed hours, um, that is going to do uh, no harm and potentially good in terms of this bill. But what I'm saying, sir, is that all the work that we did in this committee stage that is now in the bill 3B onwards, 3C, in terms of putting far greater obligations of reasonable compensation so that an employer cannot expect somebody to be available uh, without a mutual um, obligation towards that person, uh, and, sir, that there would be um, <coughs> uh, compensation and reasonable compensation made available if they asked that employee to do that work. Um, and then the number of hours for which the employee would be required to be available would have to be proportionate uh, to the agreed hours of work. All of these measures, sir, are there. So they are strong measures, and I believe they are achieving some really good outcomes on this area, uh, which we understand is called zero-hour contracts. And 
So uh, my view is, uh, and I'm sure that as we come through this whole process of, um, Mr Chair, Jonathan Young, as we come through this process of working through the SOPs, that we will come to a, a happy place of agreement, uh, that we will see, sir, that there will be minimum standards of employment that are reflected in what is even written now in the, in the bill before the House, uh, and then with the added SOPs that that will um, add to them as well, and that we will see, sir, that there will be um, opportunities for people to work with flexibility with their employers, with employees, uh, but, sir, that there won't be that ability for the vulnerable to be exploited. And I believe, sir, that that is a good thing, and this is a thing that this House would all agree with. Thank you.